Big thanks go out to Taiwa for supporting today's video via Patreon. The new and improved Gishath versus Treebeard. And hopefully our opponent's not going to scoop on us with that stacked hand. We will keep Sylvan Safekeeper to start things off. Can give things Shroud. We draw into a dinosaur in the Thrashing Brontodon. So go for a land into Sol Ring and take that into the Grim Monolith straight away. Just need to get into the Naya Colors now and hope that our opponent can't destroy artifacts straight away. <laughs> Gets into a Haywire Mite, so can destroy artifacts. Which one does he go after? The Grim Monolith. So we at least untap with the Sol Ring next turn. Might have gone after the Sol Ring personally. But we managed to distract away from that at least. Uh, go for... Yep, it can be the Rampant Growth here. Don't suppose it matters which colour we get with this. And then the uh, Misty Rainforest, we can threaten something like a Swords with that, but we're probably just going for the Tapped Nile Land. And next turn it's looking like we'll be able to get down the Regal Behemoth to get the Monarch. And our opponent has some fast mana of his own, so we're at more of a level playing field now. May well see the tree beard. Instead it is Academy Manufacturer. So we'll crack the Rainforest at the end of the turn. And alright, Elemental Bond is nice. Um, so tempting to get that down instead of the Regal Behemoth, but if our opponent wants to go wide, he'll have to lose a creature. May well get some more removal out of our opponent's hand as well, so that he can steal the Monarchy away from us. Also, we get the double mana from this as long as we are the Monarch. No surplus mana, unfortunately, so we just pass the turn. We do draw a card, that is the Congregation at Dawn, so we may be able to set up with the Gashath next turn. Scavenger Grounds entering play, I don't think we're really all that concerned with that. And there we see the Gaffer at the end of each end step. If you gain three or more life this turn, draw a card. And Beast Within goes onto the Regal Behemoth, so they still have to lose a creature in order to take the Regal Behemoth, or uh, take the Monarchy away from us. I'll happily take their Academy Manufacturer away. Don't know if it's common knowledge or not, but Gaffer is um, slang in English, or uh, British in general. Uh, it's slang for boss. Like you tend to call someone the gaffer if they are the boss. Don't know the law behind this particular character, but might be interesting for anyone listening. Alright, so we managed to keep the monarchy. Do not have our double mana, unfortunately. And do not have the mana for Argus Shaft now, either. So our opponent's plan worked out. That means we can set up with the Elemental Bond, though. Although we can't play a creature into the Elemental Bond, annoyingly. So maybe just Thrashing Brontodon blowing up the mana crypt would be fine. And they still have to lose a creature to swing in at us and take the monarchy. But I'm not too bothered about the monarchy at this point. We just want to be getting into a land for next turn and hopefully keeping hold of the Sol Ring to play our Gashath. There is a get lost, which we can't hold up thanks to the goofy mana. Just one card left in our opponent's hand. And it is a prosperous innkeeper. So makes a clue of food and a treasure token. And someone pointed out to me in a previous video that this is the treasure for Jurassic Park. These are the um, shaving foam can things from the film with the uh, the samples or whatever it is. I can't remember what's actually in those things. But it's from the Jurassic Park set. Uh, get rid of the Academy Manufacturer if they are so eager for the monarchy. Hopefully if we get into a land next turn we'll be swinging in with haste anyway and taking it back. They didn't actually have to swing in with the Academy Manufacturer there, they could have just offered up these two. Anyway, they cracked a food there, so I drew a card to the gaffer. And a land, please. We've got enough of them in the deck. Alright, a Rhythm of the Wild. So let's see if we can take the Monarchy back. Might just have to go for Rishkar's Expertise to try and guarantee a land. And they do get rid of the Prosperous Innkeeper. So yeah, annoyingly, let's go for Rishkar's Expertise. Our opponent slowed us down very nicely. Only drawing three cards here, but we do get a free spell. Um, yeah, do we just go Elemental Bond? Cultivate is tempting, but I'll be greedy and go for the Elemental Bond. So assuming that the Sol Ring survives, we can get down our commander next turn. We do have more cards in hand than our opponent. Better means of drawing cards as well, so even if they get rid of this, it's likely that we'll still see Gashath this game. There's a Strip Mine, but our opponent decided to play it and tap it for mana. And there we see Treebeard into play, creating two food tokens, but we've managed to see the back of the Manufacturer at this point. So no additional mana. And then sacrificing a food token to gain life will draw with the Gaffer at the end of the turn. 
plus counters on the tree beard as well. So that is a 3A. It can defend against the Gashath. So do we have to go for the Get Lost onto that? Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to. Continuing to draw to the Monarchy. Managed to draw into a land, so let's go for Cultivate then. Could put a plus counter on the Gashath with the Rhythm of the Wild maybe. A couple of planes should be alright here. And we do have to pay Ward on this, so maybe do that at the end of our opponent's turn. Just hold up the Get Lost. But yeah, Treebeard may well get back into this one. Now seeing an Urza Saga as well, so we'll eventually be able to tutor for something. A three visits, three cards left in hand. May well want to hold up mana for the food token. And then Sylvan Karyatid. So a decent amount of toughness in play even after the commander goes down. Strip Mine going on to our Trample and Buff in Kessig Wolfram. We'll just float the mana. They don't have enough mana to replay the tree beard at this point. And trying to pass priority, so we'll go after their commander. Get lost, can destroy an enchantment creature or planeswalker in exchange for two maps. Alright, so deciding to sack a land and give Shroud to that. Should maybe have made us pay the ward cost before that. And then sacrificing a food at the end of the turn. Draw another card. It is plus counters onto the gaffer this time. So strangely, in a Gishath Stompy deck, we wouldn't mind seeing a board wipe at this point. And you trap your tyrant. Exiles a creature and opponent controls until that leaves the battlefield. Um, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana. So maybe go for Rhythm of the Wild so that we can better swing in with the Gashath next turn. Uh, plus counter should be fine on the Trap Jaw Tyrant. Draw a card with the Elemental Bond. Alright, a Savage Order is quite nice. So uh, that means that we can sacrifice Trap Jaw Tyrant next turn, assuming that it isn't dark damage before then. Uh, if it is, like I said, we can go after the Sylvan Safekeeper or the Treebeard. Don't mind them sacking lands necessarily. Um, but Savage Order, there's a cool thing we can do with it, which hopefully we'll see next turn if we can keep a dinosaur in play to sack to it. Our opponent's got up to four cards in hand though. An Enlightened Shooter during the upkeep for our opponent. And that is the One Ring, so is going to definitely keep drawing cards with that. It's our opponent that gets protection from everything, I think. Yeah, it's you gain protection from everything, so we can still mess with the permanence. As a Saga can make a construct if he wants to. Yavamaya Hollow is going to regenerate stuff. But hopefully we're looking to exile instead. They tap down the mana anyway that they'd need to put into that. So there's the One Ring being cast. And they are at 48 life, so not going to be going down to the One Ring anytime soon. Drawing again to the Monarch, they are at 3 cards in hand. There's a Nature's Law. So we've got 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 mana after the Savage Order. And we want to be paying Ward costs as well, so let's go for the Savage Order. No point swinging in. And trying to take the monarchy, they'll just chump block with the commander. Plus we'd give them back anything that was exiled anyway. So get rid of the Trapjaw Tyrant. And with that we can grab ourselves an Apex Altasaur, which will fight things. And it is going to have Indestructible, so might as well put haste on this and try to get the monarchy. Uh, we'll just draw a card after the Apex Altasaur, because we've got to put targets on the stack anyway. So go after the Sylvan Safekeeper. See if they want to sacrifice another land in order to try and counter this. But the trick that we can use here is going indestructible on the Apex Altasaur means that we can fight everything at the table, particularly good in multiplayer. Uh, Alright, and they did have the mana held up for the Yavamaya Hollow, so making them do that. Damage still dealt, so we'll go after it again. See if they want to sack a land to give Shroud. Alright, managing to get rid of that is excellent. So then we'll go after the Gaffer. Surprised they didn't protect that with Shroud, to be honest, but you got to play to your outs. Getting rid of that as well. And now we can go after Treebeard, finally. And we will pay into the ward cost. Yeah, our opponent's not happy here. He thought the Sylvan Safekeeper being regenerated would keep the Altasaur from fighting again, but the uh, Sylvan Safekeeper still was dealt damage and dealt damage. So it survived the first time and then we got to fight it again. For anyone else who's confused, that's um, the reason that it worked out the way it did. So I'm hoping we don't see a shame scoop here, but I can smell one coming. Yep, 
Yeah, he said he thinks it has regenerate until the end of the turn. That's not how regenerate works. If a creature with regenerate would die, instead the regeneration shield falls off and you tap it. That's the difference between regenerate and indestructible. So we fought it, it regenerated and tapped. Then Apex Altasaur fought it again without the regeneration shield this time and it died. So yeah, our opponent not quite understanding what regenerate does here, unfortunately. Yeah, and he's he's saying it's a glitch. It isn't a glitch, that's how regenerate works. And now he's done playing the game because of course he is. It's a shame that as soon as we get out from underneath him, he decides to bounce on us. We can go wide on him here and take the monarchy back and next turn finally go into see Gashath. Yeah, our opponent played it well there, but missed the Sylvan Safekeeper. He could have countered altogether and given this thing Shroud in order to stop the Altasaur from doing stuff. Alright, my opponent's been a bit of a dick, so um, <laughs> I decided to be petty and be a bit of a dick back, but yeah, um, he's done talking about it, he's done playing this game now. Looks like Salty the Salt Shaker is back after quite a long hiatus. We will try and play another game, I think. I wonder how long it's going to take my opponent to actually concede. Just want to point out quickly as well, our opponent could have kept the monarchy as well, because um, he actually has protection thanks to the one ring, so we couldn't have taken that this turn anyway. Um... Yeah, so he's in a better position than he might realise, but yeah, anyway, we'll get on with that other game. Alright, we'll try against Mishra this time. Mishra is usually a fun one. Uh, no green mana. Typically want green mana in the opening hand. <laughs> Alright, um, well, our opponent asks for no counter magic in this game. If you leave caveats like that in the lobby, it typically means that you're a bit more sensitive to the types of games you play. Hopefully our opponent isn't worried about fast mana. Um, get rid of the ranging raptors should be fine. Alright, there's a cavern of souls, ironically, as soon as we don't play in a game against counter magic we see cavern of souls we'll fix our mana regardless uh, we want the mana crypt so that we can play ourselves a rampant growth here and yep what did i say up against scion of the earth dragon this time dragon versus dinosaurs with one mana we will not go for that okay sylvan library might get us back into it so we'll try a keep and yeah we'll put the galter back into the library Alright, our opponent's had to mulligan down to five cards and is on the draw at least, so we're on an even playing field here. Cracking Garrod Mesa and deciding to shock in the Blood Crypt goes into Azoria Signet. Alright, there's a Mana Vault, we'll probably keep this turn. And Atali and a Jetmere's Garden, so let's just take the eight life here. And then we can maybe go for Worldly Tutor in for the Topiary Stomper so that we can fix the last bit of colour we need. Oh, okay. Apparently not. Our opponent passed straight through the turn and... Yeah, and now... <laughs> oh, God. Okay, we'll try again, shall we? Right, last try of the night. Up against Carador this time. And no colours means we mulligan into fast mana for our opponent to scoop to. Get rid of the Trapjaw Tyrant. And yeah, nothing to do on turn one. So we'll hold up the Swords to Plowshares, but I imagine we're going for a tap land. Alright, and there's a Deathrite Shaman, so we could Swords that in order to hurt the mana next turn, but I think we'd rather hold on to it for something a bit spicier than that. I mean, we could always get rid of it with the Bronze Beak Foragers as well, but maybe get down at Hulking Raptor so that we can start adding additional mana. Yeah, I think that's fine. Get down the Mana Crypt. Go for the Hulking Raptor. Be interesting to see if the additional mana from the Deathrite Shaman is relevant here. Alright, just going for a 2 mana spell anyway, the Sata Wayfinder. Four cards revealed with that include Jared, a Spirited Companion, a Land, and Bane of Progress, which will get rid of our mana crypt. They just keep hold of a forest. 
I actually miscalculated last turn. I thought we'd be able to get down the Gashath here, but unfortunately not. So we'll go for the Bronzebeak Foragers, and I'll try and take my opponent off some mana with the Deathrite Shaman, just for the sake of doing something this turn. Okay, and that was enough to do it. So if you don't see another gameplay here, then I tried again the next day or over the next few days and didn't get anything any better than this. So hopefully you see another gameplay here, but if you don't, then I apologise. Going to try again against Ixel here, and yeah, I don't hold out much hope for that hand, but if we keep a really good hand, then our opponent's going to scoop anyway, so we will neuter our own plays here. <laughs> Alright, but getting to a Sol Ring anyway, so yeah, apparently the fast mana wants to show up this game. Bajuka Bog will exile our graveyard, and there's a forest. We'll try and use the Misty Rainforest to get down a tap land, so it can just be the Rampant Growth here. Alright, Magic Online's on a real go slow here, the whole client just crashed, so just had to restart, I'll try and get everything loaded up quickly. Anyway, our opponent went after a Wasteland so that he can get rid of a non-basic land on our side of the field for a sacrifice, and decided to give us our first Poison Counter. If the card will inflate, Infectious Inquiry, draw two, you lose two life and each opponent gets a Poison Counter. And we want double green from the Misty Rainforest so that we can play this Topiary Stomper that I'm sure we'll be able to cast eventually. Topiary Stomper will allow us to put a land into play from our deck. Alright, an overgrown tomb from our opponent. And it seems as though the client has caught up with us finally. So now why don't we see, I think our opponent's going to be holding up removal for Gashath. So why don't we try and force them to go for Regal Behemoth. And this way we can have the Monarchy as well. Can't attack with the Topiary Stomper because we don't have enough lands. We do draw to the Monarch though, and that is a far seek for next turn. And like we saw in a previous game, we will have double mana if we manage to keep Regal, Behemoth and the Monarchy. And again, our opponent just holding up that removal that we assume he has. There's a Blasphemous Act. So are we going to go for the Gishath now? Galta will cost us three at the moment. And then we could go for Traverse the Outlands. And then they remove Galter in response. Should be alright. And then our opponent can remove the Galter in response to the Traverse the Outlands, like I said, but if they do, then so be it. We should still get a decent number of lands. So we search our library for X basic lands, where X is the greatest power. Currently 12, of course. And we're allowed to search up 12, that's good. I think it's exactly all the basics that are left in our library, actually. So we've got all our basics out now. Um, let's... Go for the... We well, might as well hold up the Generous Gift, I suppose. Do appreciate my opponent being patient here because we have been having computer issues, as I've mentioned a couple of times. Attack in with both, one of which has Vigilance, so can still be held back as a blocker. Not seeing too much Galter action this video, are we? Alright, and has a Teferi's Protection, so maybe was holding that up against our commander. Argument to be made for him holding on to that for when Gishath actually does hit play, but he doesn't want to be... Wasting his turns holding up to Fairy's Protection for another couple of turns. Because I think that's clearly what he was doing last turn. I just assumed that it was removal. Alright, and our opponent takes 12 to a Toxic Deluge. Might feel excessive, but if you're going to take 12 to the Galta and then some anyway next turn, you might as well take that damage and wipe the board. So that is our double mana gone. But luckily we've made good use of it. So we see a Ranging Raptors here. Don't have too much Enrage in the deck anymore, I took a lot of it out in order to fit in all the new stuff. So let's try this Gashath while our opponent's only got Colourless Mana held up. Let's see if we can hit anything. Vigilance on the Gashath as well, so the Dryad Arbor can't take the Monarchy away from us. Deciding not to block, trying to keep the land in play. So Gashath gets the full hit. And there we see a good amount of Dinosaurs, that is Atali, it's Quinth. Kinjali's Sunwing in order to resist the blockers. Thrashing Brontodon. And Awakening Sun's Avatar doesn't do anything when we get it off the Gashath. We do trigger the It's Quint though. And yeah, our opponent decides to scoop at that. Nothing else he's going to do. This is straight after a board wipe. Appreciating playing it out. We at least got to see a little bit of Gashath Sun's Avatar towards the end there. But yeah, had a real tough time getting games with this commander. If you want to see more from it, then I will try again. So you'll have to let me know in the comments section. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.